Good morning and welcome to Ignite this morning. I do hope you're well. I do hope that uh, you're enjoying uh, the weeks as they go by. We've still got the sun uh, joining us in the day, so I do hope that you're having a great time doing whatever you're doing. Uh, today we've got uh, like a game for you, a Bible reading, a reflection, some discussion questions and a prayer as well, so do stick around. But first, let's jump straight into our game and see uh, what people would rather do. Dog food. Yeah, I'd eat dog food as well. Eat dog food or cat food? Well, I feel like with dog food, you get sort of like meaty chunks and, and some vegetables and stuff and, and gravy. So it's kind of like a roast dinner. So I'm going to go with that one. Although I wouldn't want to go with the dry biscuits, but then cats get those as well. So yeah, no, I'd have to go with dog food. Definitely dog food. We'd rather go to the beach. I've never been on a roller coaster anyway, so... Yeah, we'd go to the beach for sure. <laughs> Theme park or beach? That's, that's an easy one for me. I'd have to go to the beach. I love the beach. Sandy or stony, I just love the water, the, the, the whole atmosphere. Love the beach. I would rather preach than lead worship. I think I'd rather lead worship because uh, you have to say less and you get to pick the songs. <laughs> that, was, that was a good, good excuse. Yeah. Preach or lead worship? I'd have to go with preach. Yeah, preach. Um, I'd, I'd tell my friends about Jesus rather than not see them for a year. That's obvious to me. <laughs> yeah, it's been really hard not seeing friends properly for the past few months. Um, so it just seems like an easier thing and a better thing to tell them about Jesus. Tell your friends about Jesus or not see them for a year. I'd have to pick tell my friends about Jesus. I, I love people. I like being around people. I don't think I could go for a year without seeing my friends. So yeah, definitely I'd have to do that. I would have a full English breakfast because there's so much more on that plate. You've got bacon, you've got sausage, you've got egg, you've got beans, you've got toast, you've got mushrooms, maybe a tomato. <laughs> there's so much on there. So I disagree. I would go for steak and chips for sure. I'm much more of a dinner person than a breakfast person. Although I do like a full English as well. Can I just choose both? Have both. Yeah, both. We choose both. Both. Massive full English or steak dinner? with chips obviously um that's a tough one full english is like the best meal ever but steak and chips is phenomenal i have to go with a massive full english but as long as there's eggs bacon sausages hash browns beans tomatoes toast mushrooms uh black pudding bacon did i say that we'll add some more on if not yeah that would be the winner Excellent. Well, I do hope that you joined in that at home and you thought about those questions and which one you would rather do. Now let's jump straight into our reading, shall we? It comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 to 30, and it says this. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean a fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. 
for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going to go through the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Now I'm going to pop some discussion questions up on the screen, so do feel free to pause the video here and discuss the questions with those around you, or just think of the answers on your own, and I'll be back in a minute. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Odd words for Paul to say, don't you think? I mean, if you were to say that to anybody around you at the moment, I don't think most people would hear the first part. They'd just sort of blur past it. They'd only focus on the second half of that sentence. To die is gain. It doesn't sound right, does it? How can dying be a gain when you've stopped living? You've stopped existing. So how can that be a gain? It doesn't make any sense. Although when you believe in the gospel, all of that is changed. If you believe in Jesus, if you believe in the gospel, if you believe that Jesus is the saviour of the world who died to save you and me and everybody from sin and from evil, then you receive eternal life in heaven with God the Father. And that, that life in heaven is the gain that Paul is talking about, living forever with God the Father. Paul knows that heaven is far greater than this earth. And he says, I don't know which to choose, heaven or this earth. But he chooses this earth because he doesn't want to give up. He doesn't want to give up. That would be counterproductive. Paul must stay in order to complete the task that God has set before him. He has been called to help people know who God is, who Jesus is and what he can do for their lives. He's writing to the church in Philippi in our reading today to tell them that he's not going to give up, that he's going to stick around to help them with their walk with Christ. Paul's greatest desire is to know that more and more and more people will get to share in the eternal life in heaven. And this is his call to us, to join him in his work, to join him in his challenge. We must try and help people to know who God is, to know who Jesus is, and to know what they can do in our lives today. Not just here on this earth, but also in heaven. We will all have choices in life, what courses to study, what jobs to apply for, what friends to spend time with, what activities we do or where we put our faith. Paul's encouragement is to select all of those things in accordance with what will help others to know about God. Put your faith in him and live your life for him. That is is why for Paul, to live is Christ. All he does, all he strives for, is for Christ. And we should be encouraged to follow in his footsteps. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for Paul, a great role model for us all. May you help us to strive to make choices that honour you, and are to help in the progressing of your work here on earth. Help us to be people who are willing and able to share your love with those around us, and to help more people know about you and share in that eternal life in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning, and I do hope to see you again next week for our next Ignite session. I'll see you then.